if this upspin goes from i to j side then it forms a double occupancy at the j side now if we don't have any strong interaction then this is a happy hopping because it wants to hop around and lower the energy if the interaction between the two electrons are very strong that means the two electrons don't want to come together they repel each other then this hopping is a prohibited hopping so with strong correlation it's not a allowed hopping now suppose we have disorder so let's mimic it by putting a attractive potential at the j side so if we go from i side to j side it goes from a higher potential to lower potential so without strong correlation it's even a happier hopping whereas if you have strong correlation this hopping is anyway blocked so it shows that the importance of strong correlations become much prominent if you have disorder in the system so physically if you want to see it physically that disorder wants to make the inhomogeneous charge distribution so wherever there is a potential well you want to pile up charge there if there is a potential hill you want to get rid of charge there uh, sorry uh, yeah you sure the previous slide and uh, how disorder i mean in the presence of disorder with strong correlations because uh, so if we stick to this cartoon at the very yeah. simple level so this hopping the uh, upper one the upper hopping was anyway blocked with strong correlation which is also blocked here because you form a double occupancy whereas without strong correlation you go from a in a landscape which has same energy and you decrease energy by having a hopping kinetic energy whereas if you are going in a this picture simple classical picture if you think that you are putting this electron from a higher potential to a lower potential you decrease the energy by going from this in this side to this side so in a way this without strong correlation you will have a happier hopping it's just okay. a very simplified okay. picture okay 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 so the hopping is uh, more uh, uh, probable in the second case if it goes from i to j side yes yes so this is very very hand waving but even if we want to understand it physically so charge distribution gets inhomogeneous if you have disorder whereas strong correlation wants to smoothen out this disorder because uh, if you have charge pile up at one place it doesn't want electrons to be together and it wants to homogenize the system so these two features strong correlation and disorder will try to compete with each other so to understand the role in or to see what happens let me first give what is the model that we will be considering in most of the rest of the talk so this is we will start from at the back of the mind we will have the hubbard model which is this hopping and uh, on site repulsion between the two electrons in the limit when u is much larger than t we can do a threefold transformation and we can get to a tj like model where we have t the hoppings and the j's which are the exchange interactions between nearest neighbor sites and we will put in disorder by hand after this now you can see that after this transformation the c's are now projected that means this tilde means that you have a projection operator sandwiched here so these are not no longer c's but something else which takes care of the strong correlations by projection operators now we will always work with this tj model projected tj model and most of this rest of my talk i will be focusing somewhere here in the phase diagram around optimal doping where i can neglect mostly the competing orders which are coming up at under doping so the interaction then that you got jij is yeah. it of order t square or i mean it's it's, uh, it's of t square by u so t it's by u. yeah, yeah and then we put disorder by getting this vi ni term this is a non magnetic disorder so if we have a, for the rest of this talk i will focus on a box disorder which means that we have potential on site chemical potentials different at all the sites and they are drawn from a distribution which looks like this which goes from minus v by 2 to plus v by 2 and the strength of the disorder will be quantified by this width so this the v will be the strength of this potential we have also considered other models of disorder which uh, gives qualitative similar result but i will not talk about them in this talk so the method that we will consider is uh, augmented framework of kurzweiler approximation and 
Voglebov Degen's theory of spatial fluctuation. So on the one hand, BDG theory takes care of inhomogeneous fluctuations of density. So I, at some point I will be calling it IMT, which is like inhomogeneous mean field theory. I might also call it just BDG. If we couple it with a Goodzwiller approximation, then I will call it in the rest of the talk like GIMT, which is Goodzwiller inhomogeneous mean field theory. Now, what Goodzwiller approximation actually does is to get rid of the double occupancies from the Hilbert space. So we can have different possible possibilities of a site. So if in Goodzwiller approximation, you take you take all the double occupancies out of the system because if you form a double occupancy, you have a huge energy cost to pay. Now, what it does effectively is to renormalize the hop parameters. Like, for example, we had these parameters in the Hamiltonian, the T or the J. What it does is that it changes this T to a, another T, renormalized parameter, with multiplied by a Goodzwiller factor, which is like GT. For the exchange interaction, it would be some other parameter. They can be simply calculated by looking at some phase space counting arguments and their forms can be given by this. Now, just try to look at one example. If we look at one example of a Goodzwiller factor for the hopping, so let's say we have a Goodzwiller factor for hopping. So this is so this expectation has no zero here, whereas this expectation has a zero here. That means what I'm trying to do is to get the Hamiltonian from a projected space where there is no double occupancy to a space where there are we can allow for double occupancies, but take care of the effect of strong correlation through these factors. Now, how does they take care of the strong correlation? If you look at this factor for the homogeneous case, it gives rise to two delta by one plus delta, where delta is the average hole doping in the system. So if the density of electrons is n, then one minus n is the doping. So let's see two examples. In the extreme limit, when if all the sites has one electron uh, per site, so then we have the average density to be one. And if we put it here, so the delta is zero, then you can see this GT is zero. So the hopping will be, there will be no hopping. So it is kind of a Mott insulator. Now, if we go in the other extreme regime where you have effectively no electrons, that means highly overdoped. So then we have this doping, the delta is giving to one because you can put it here to be n equal to zero, then you get delta equal to one. Then you will see that this factor goes to one. That means in the limit when there are very few electrons, you will that these electrons will not effectively see each other. As a result, the effect of strong correlations would be very minimal. So you will get the factor to be one. Now the picture is not as simple if you have inhomogeneity. So if you have inhomogeneities, like the if every site is different for some reason then these Goodzilla factors would be inhomogeneous. For example, this Goodzilla factor for hopping would be square root of this times square root of this at two different sites. So they will depend on local densities. Now, if we do that, and if you look at the competition of strong correlation and disorder, so if we plot the, this is off diagonal long range order, and this is a superfluid density as a function of V, V quantifies the disorder. So I will increase V and see how disorder affects superconductivity. So if we don't have strong correlation, which is this IMT, we will see this, this red curve, if you increase disorder, it goes down in both the cases and it goes to effectively zero for disorder strength of the order of two T. Now, this is quite commonly expected because you have a D wave order parameter with nodes and you expect that the disorder will actually kill this superconductivity. Whereas if you introduce strong correlation in a Goodzwiller way, in GIMT, you will see that the reduction of the superconducting order from its homogeneous value in both the cases, it's hardly 20% or 10%. So what it does, what strong correlation does to disorder is to make the superconductivity robust to disorder. This can also be seen if you look at the density of state in IMT, which is like no strong correlation, this red curve is a conventional D wave superconductor density of state with a V shaped density of state. Now, if you put on disorder, increase disorder, 
then you will see that the coherence peak, which is here, gets reduced and it gets to a flat. So that you kill superconductivity with no gap. Whereas if you include strong correlation, you will see that the density of state is quite robust in low energy, which is also seen in experiments in various STM experiments where they see that the low energy density of state is quite robust to disorder. This was also uh, shown in an earlier paper by Arti Garg, Mohit and Nandini. And so just the upshot from this part is that strong correlations make D-wave superconductivity robust to disorder. Now let's see Dimana, something else. Yeah. Dimana, I have one question. Yeah. So can you go back to the previous to previous slide? Yeah. There, yeah. So what is the difference between these two plots? Like uh, this is off diagonal long range order and this is superfluid density. So this is they are calculated in a slightly different way, but they behave very similarly. I see. And one other thing that I was saying that uh, we have taken this uh, disorder as a box disorder kind of a thing. So is this yes. coming from some kind of idea from the experiments that we have to take box disorder or this is just an approximation to start? The this theory? is the simplest way because so uh, in experiments, there can be various disorder. Like for example, you can have, as I said, you can have concentration disorder. For example, you can have some sites with disorder. You can have plane um, disorder out of plane, you can have various kinds of disorder. But the good part of this uh, box disorder is that you can have only one parameter which quantifies the disorder. So the good part of this is that you have only one parameter, whereas if you had other disorder models, you will have various parameters to play with. So I see. I see. you can have a physical picture out of this and you can map it to other models for and check whether it works or not. Okay, okay, thank you. Yeah. Yes, so let's come to another pairwise inter, uh, interplay where we see what happens to strong what happens to topology in the presence of strong correlation. Now, how does topology come in? So let's see. We have a bulk D wave superconductor. Now, if we put edges, let's see, uh, this is a bulk. So, what I've done is this is a lattice. If I just, these colors mean that if I'm in a no edge translational invariant system, I will have the plus bonds to be positive and plus X bonds to be positive and plus Y bonds to be negative. So this color means that I have a C4 symmetry breaking kind of like we have plus minus this way. So this is the D wave order parameter, which is in real space, which shows this in momentum space, which is this form. Now, if I put edges, that means I have some edge on the sample. So there can be various kinds of edges like these mentioned here, but the most interesting part, which has topological character is this 110 edge, which is this edge. That means you are cutting the sample like this. Now this edge has, it has been long shown that this edge is pair breaking. That means if you have Andrew reflection of this edge, you will form zero energy states and it will form a zero energy peak or zero bias conductance peak. But more recently, it was shown that this has a very strong topological character. And that topology comes because of the nodal D wave order parameter. That means you can see that Kx equals to Ky is one node of this order parameter. So you have nodes in momentum space. And as a result, because of these nodes and because of this geometry of the edge, you will land up with topological protection. Yeah, so Marlo, this, there is a question yes. for you from Sharasada. No, it's better if you just ask because. Yeah, yeah, because I cannot see any chat. So oh, no, I, I thought that yeah, I missed the timing. I just kept it so that I don't forget it. But fine. Uh, no, I was asking the mother that you have you talked about this D wave superconducting gap uh, being robust with disorder. Yeah, but then you have uncorrelated disorder on all the sites. You're drawing bi as independent random numbers. Yeah, uh, but if you have correlated disorder, will it still yeah. be robust? Is somebody do people know what happens? So basically, so uh, I have not gone into the details. Uh, the point is, if we have so this is this is absolutely non-correlated disorder. Yes. Now the interesting part is that you don't have to even correlate the disorder. Uh, here, what Godzilla approximation actually does for you that in the presence of strong correlation, the effective disorder that you will get, I will, I can come to it after the talk if you are interested. 
Yeah. The effective disorder is actually correlated. So if you look at the effective disorder after the full mean field, you will see that the effective disorder is actually correlated in this case, in this case, in Goodzwiller IMT. So this is effectively the results of correlated disorder. And this robustness is because of the correlatedness of the disorder. Okay. Okay. Fine. Maybe I'll ask you more about this later. Yeah, I can. I can detail you because I have slides, but I'm not. Okay, but I'll ask you after you go ahead. Yeah, I can come back to it later. Hey, Mali, I have a yeah. small question related to this uh, topology. Yeah. Um, so, what is topological about this? Uh, I, I have, let us say, some uh, gapless modes along uh, this edge, one one zero edge. But uh, where is, uh, how do I see the topology here? Yeah, so it's very simple to see it if we transform the, okay, let me, so if we, so I have a slide, so let me show it. Yeah, so a very simple way to see it is uh, there should be a psi here. So the Hamiltonian was initially like this. So it has a D wave superconductor, which is like this. Now, suppose we transform the momentum space. That means I, I rotate it like this. So K parallel means I'm along the pair breaking edge. And if I'm having K parallel perpendicular, I'm perpendicular to this phase. If I do this, uh, just this transformation to this Hamiltonian, we will land up to a pairing order, which is like a P wave. So what it does is that in along this direction, they are effectively 1D Kitaev chains, but with different, so these are, this is 1D, if I'm looking at 1D in the perpendicular direction, it is like a P wave. So if you can see that the order parameter is like a P wave. So it is like a 1D Kitaev chain, but it's not, just 1D because you have another momentum. So there is a large number of K parallel, which will give you zero energy states. This is a very simple way to understand why is this topological. Sorry, I didn't understand that. You had a D wave order parameter. How do you yeah. make it into a P? That's, no, can, that's can, you, can you repeat? You had a D wave order parameter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The no, so, state. so it There's is a D wave. When you get a sine k, it does not become a P wave. No, 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 it doesn't no. become a How P wave. It... So this is this does not so become that... a P wave. So this is a way to see if I have a momentum. Uh, let's say I'm I don't have any edge, but if I rotate in a so first of all, I cannot do this rotation because I don't have any bonds on the next nearest neighbor. In principle, as you were saying, that to get a P wave, I need some like along this direction, I need interactions. But if I naively see that I rotate the basis, so if I'm along this direction, it looks like a P wave, because if you just do this transformation, it will be a P wave along this direction, but you can see that it's not a P wave, it's sine times sine. But if there is a translation symmetry breaking only along this direction, then it is a P wave. So, uh I guess you are uh, like uh, we we expected something else from topology, but you probably just mean uh, this linearly yeah. dispersing or gapless character. Although, like yeah, that's zero not energy how traditionally we. Yes, about. yes, exactly. So that was my next point. So basically, you will but see your wave that functions will not have the yeah. chirality, no? Yeah, it will so have it. It will. So there is no. So yeah, exactly. So let me. So if you calculate the winding number, let's say. Uh -huh. So let me, yeah. So if you calculate the winding number, you will see that for different k's, you will find a finite winding number. Now this, the, even with the particular wave function, and this winding number is finite only because you have a sign change. That means a nodal order parameter. Now it will still have a finite winding number. Now you might say whether it's, uh, it's still chiral because you have a chiral symmetry. It's still chiral, but it is, it has both winding numbers, one and minus one. So, and as I said that there are zero energy states. So these zero energy states are protected by uh, several symmetries, for example, time reversal symmetry. So if you look at the winding numbers, you will see that the zero energy states are protected by disorder. 
uh, sorry, not disorder, by symmetries like time reversal symmetry or translational symmetry along the along the edge like here. Now, if I want to classify it, let me go back to the original slide. So Devmalo, are you yeah. saying that anytime I have a node in an order parameter, I will be able to do it? Because yes, yes, yes. Going... But 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 for particular ages. Yeah. So let me show this one. So if you do the same uh, calculation like of winding number along this age, like if I have X and Y, then you are still like D wave. So there would be no finite winding numbers. But if you are along this direction, then you will have it. So let's say if I take another order parameter like dxy along the diagonals, then this will be my pair breaking. So if I, as long as I have nodes, they are sign change in the order parameter, they can be directly related to the winding number. And as I showed in the other slide, that it is exactly proportional to the, uh, the sign change. You can show it that sign change and uh, winding number goes hand in hand. Yeah. Hi, can I ask what, what happens when you have a line node? So it also works. Now I am still in 2D, so it's easy to see. But if I have 3D, it will still work. So the, the winding number calculation I showed, I have personally done it only for 2D, but I'm pretty sure it will work even for 3D. It's much more general. Okay. Hi, can I ask a yeah, question? Yeah. So uh, is this like the zigzag edge of graphene yes, where the exactly, exactly, uh, two exactly. Dirac points project to two different points in the one individual zone, and that's yes. why I cannot gap it yes. out. Yes, precisely. Okay. It's even very similar to let's say a wild super a wild wild material. So these uh, nodes, the two nodes of a wild material on the surface, you cannot get rid of them. So the con states connecting them will be at uh, zero energy. And as you said, it's exactly the zigzag age of a, of okay. a, of a graphene, yeah. Okay, so yeah, but there are some, okay, so let me proceed. I will explain later, uh, I'll explain more. So. The conventional way, as I'm pointing out here, that the conventional way, let's say in topological insulators, we are used to thinking of topology in terms of normal bands, like you have spin orbit coupling or some other uh, features that gives you topology in the normal bands, whereas here it is the, the normal bands are still non-topological. It is the nodal order parameter or the superconducting order parameter that gives the topology. Now. It is still, for now, let's see if we don't have any disorder, no disorder for now, but we still have pair breaking edges or even all edges. So these edges breaks uh, translational symmetry along different directions. So this is a different form of inhomogeneity. Now let's see what happens to this topology in the presence of strong correlations. Now, if we look at the order parameter itself, so if you look at the D-wave order parameter, the amplitude of it, this BDG, no strong correlation again. So along the pair breaking edge, I will not be focusing on the other three, other one, two, three, four, four edges, but they are not important for the discussion. Along this edge, as you can see already, that this is the pair breaking edge. On the other edges, they don't, they don't significantly matter. But along this edge, you can see that the order parameter in the bulk was this red value. Along the edge, you get a huge separation. Now, if you include strong correlation in this GIMT, you still get a separation. And you see that along the pair breaking edge, you still have a strong separation. Now, what is the difference? It has one crucial difference that this, if you plot along this direction, along the perpendicular direction, the order parameter, the change of the order parameter from the bulb. So the blue line is this GIMT and the red one is this one. So you see that the value it goes the length scale along which it goes to the bulk value is quite long in BDG, whereas in GIMT with strong correlation, it gets to its bulk value at a very strong short distance along this direction. This is one feature, but anyway, we are getting the pair breaking. So if I think very naively, I should expect this, right? Because as I said slightly before that topologically, 
the, these states, uh, the zero energy states are topologically protected. So I should, topology should win somehow. So I should anyway have uh, pair, break, pair breaking because I'm not breaking any symmetry. So it should not matter. So as a result, I should expect pair breaking still. That is what happens. Now, does that mean that there is no effect of strong correlation? It's not. So now I will be using this kind of plot a lot in the rest of the talk. Uh, I yeah. have a question. Uh, why do you say uh, logically protected? Because any short wavelength disorder would gap it out. Right? Yes, it yes, yes. So I'm I'm saying topologically protected so against irrespective, against irrespective uh, symmetry is like time reversal. So till now I don't have any disorder. No, but uh, even time reversal symmetric states, a uh, time reversal symmetric short wavelength disorder, which uh, really connects to uh, yes, the yes, definitely disorder breaks it. I will, I will, I will come to it. Just give me. In the second half, I will come to it. So this, I'm saying, I'm just saying that let's say I have a time reverse uh, translational symmetry and time reversal symmetry, then it is protected. That's what so I'm saying. Wait, okay. So you have translation, translation invariance, no? You already. I have, have translation along the, along the edge. Along the edge. Along the edge. But the, along this direction, I have broken translation symmetry. But I need translation symmetry along this edge. And no disorder for now. I will come to uh, this. Is the point I will actually emphasize slightly later when I put disorder. But as long as you don't break any time reversal symmetry or any translational symmetry along the edge, you should not change things. And this, but then what is the effect of strong correlation? Let's not even think of any symmetry breaking. Then if we look at these plots, so what I'm doing here is that I'm plotting the eigenvalues. So if I plot the eigenvalues, this is the energy. And what does this axis mean is just that, for example, this point means I have an eigenvalue at this point. Another one means that I have an eigenvalue. So basically what it says is the y-axis is the number of states with the particular eigenvalue. So if you look at uh, BDG and JIMT, you can see that in JIMT, the number of zero energy states. So as I said earlier, you will form zero energy states. And you can see that in, with, in the presence of strong correlation, the number of zero energy states are hugely enhanced. Now it's only strong correlations that's enhancing this uh, zero energy states, but why? Now let's see if we can build some analytic understanding of this. Now, as uh, Shubhra was pointing out, zero, that, uh, Debanda, yeah. are these all exactly zero energy? States? No, so they are very small in energy, but they are exponentially close to zero. So, in any finite system, it should not go to exact zero, but yes, there. Uh -huh. So, if you increase so the system size, once you are looking at energetics, yeah, right, between GIMT and BDG. How do you compare these things? Because that's uh, precisely. I will. I will come to. I will come to. Uh, that would be my one or two next slide. So I will come to exactly. So this is significantly enhanced as only here. So let's try to build in some analytic understanding why and how. So if we so this was shown by earlier by Potter and Patrick Lee that. If you build up a uh, picture, like suppose you have a bulk which has a, so this is a uh, Fermi surface I'm plotting. So I'm in momentum space. So if I have a bulk, that means I can plot the Fermi surface. So these blue lines are the Fermi surfaces. And these green lines are the nodes that I was talking about. So you have Fermi, uh, a Fermi surface intersecting these nodes at, uh, at these nodal lines at nodal points, basically. So what they said, they showed, and you can actually show it by topological arguments also by other papers, it was shown that the number of zero energy states will be decided by the distance between from this point to this point. Now, if my bulk is deciding my number of zero energy states, then you might, as Rajdeep was saying, that you might say that I'm cheating, right? Because what my bulk bandwidth is changed. As I said slightly few slides be before, that the hopping parameter, for example, is changed by a Goodzilla factor, which is GT. So my bulk bandwidth is completely changed. My density is different. My uh, exchange interactions are different. 
So this is a completely, well, it's not nonsense, but you can say that it's actually not a right comparison as Razdeep was pointing out. Now let's think, let's try to make a correct comparison. So let's fix the bulk. So we want to see what happens for bulk boundary correspondence. So that means the bulk bands decides the number of zero energy states at the boundary. So let's fix the bulk. How can we do it? So let's fix a bulk such that my all my parameters, everything, all my parameters are exactly same in the bulk. But I take the inhomogeneous aspect of strong correlation out in one calculation and have them in the full GIMT calculation. So I will call this for the next slide, I will call it alt BDG, which is like alternative BDG. So I will still have a BDG, but my I have changed my parameters such that I can compare two right things. So let's do this comparison. So if I look at the local density, this is electron density. Sorry, the, so, Manlo, I, didn't, yeah. I didn't understand this difference. Once you have changed your parameters, uh, what is the difference your uh... so so as i said uh, here no you are doing mean field equations in the end no yes but uh, there are two aspects of uh, goodwiller one which is this homogeneous renormalization which anyway does this number does but there is another aspect which is the fact that you have i and j so you can still have so let me show this it will be much more clear i think so let's see, I'm looking at the density and uh, just bear me with me for 30 seconds. So let's look at the density. So if I'm having the same geometry, the electron density in GIMT, I still have the same density in the bulk with all BDG. So I have fixed a BDG calculation. It's a BDG calculation with the bulk, which is exactly same as this. You can see that the density is still fixed. Now, as you were saying, my all my Goodzilla factors would be exactly same true because it will have so as a result i will have all my gt uh, t will be my new t my j will be renormalized so what i'm fixing is the bulk but there is something else what is happening here is that the goodzilla factors depends on two sites which is the this site and also the nearest neighbor sites so there is an inhomogeneous aspect of the goodzilla factor that comes in in the calculation because you have to take derivatives of the goodzilla factor in a mean field calculation but you still have the homogeneous renormalizations to be exactly same does it answer your question rajdeep not really because i thought so, you had uh, a translation invariant age so i'm not sure no no translation invariant is. along this direction not along this direction so let's say I have a, so let me give you an example. So I have one site on the edge and another site at this point. What would be my Goodzwiller factor? My Goodzwiller factor would depend on this density and this density, right? Yeah. Whereas in this calculation, I don't have a different Goodzwiller factor here. What I do is just to fix the bulk, such that my bulk bands, bulk delta, everything is same. I see. I see. So my Goodzilla, the effect that it has in between different Goodzilla factors at this side is no longer present here. That's the only difference between these two. Okay. So what it physically means is that it just has the inhomogeneous aspect of strong correlation, whereas the bulk renormalizations are taken care of. Now let me compare. As I said that I will still compare. So let me now look at the eigenvalues. Now you will see that this is still, even it's better. That means that this number of eigenvalues at zero energy for GIMT is still much higher than this kind of calculation. Now, you might say that uh, what is going on? Let's try to build some understanding. Let's go one by one into this plot. So I have the same bulk for GIMT and all BDG. So my bulk band, if I think of this density and chemical potential, I will have this yellow line this yellow line just see look at this yellow line that would be my bulk band which i have kept fixed for these two now what bulk boundary correspondence says is that i'm fine with uh, this bulk band then if i'm fine with the bulk band this lambda one should be the number of zero energy states whereas in these two calculation as you can see that it's significantly different so what we are saying is that what might happen is that these local densities, if you look at the local density at the edge for a non goodzilla kind of calculation, you get a significant reduction on the edge, at the edge. So it will be very low here. 
Whereas in GIMT, this density is significantly enhanced at the edge. As a result, if you plot the bands corresponding to this density, you will see, so this green one is the GIMT edge density. So if I take everything same as this edge, I will get a band like this. If I take everything same to be like this edge, I will get a different band, which is this blue one. Now, so if you come- Debal, just yeah. one second. Your graph seems to tell me that if I have whatever GIMT, yeah. then the edge density is higher than that of the bulk. Yes. Does that make sense to you? Because you that, would be where, that would be my next slide. That would be my next slide. Where just, your wave function just, must go to zero, no? So uh, not it. the wave function. Uh, let, let me let me just give me a. Okay. I will come to the uh, question. So if we look here, so if I assume that this density is going up, then you will see that the number of zero energy states then makes kind of sense. You can have a proportionality between this that you will come from this distance and this distance is much larger. Then it makes sense that why. So basically what it says is that the enhanced local density here is responsible for uh, the enhancement of uh, zero energy states. Now, let me come to your question. So is it at all physical? So let's say I'm taking a simple picture. So let's say we have a plateau, which is like this. So you put two human beings here. So if the tendency of people is that you don't want to go towards the edge because you have the fear of falling. So they will happily stay near the middle of the edge. Now, let's say if you have something like what we have currently, like social distancing. So if you have social distancing, then you cannot go close together to each of them, which is very similar to strong correlation. So the tendency of strong correlation is to smear out charge. So it wants to get electrons as far apart from each other as possible. And as a result, you will see that the, uh, the, the people or the electrons will even go to the edge because there is no other way out. It cannot go near each other. So you will start accumulating charge density at the edge. Yes. Uh, are you convinced, Rajdeep? No, I'm still not convinced. Uh, I so mean, uh, I mean, I, I can see it from your equations, but in a real system, I would be yeah. very uh, where you actually put an edge and you put a strong correlation and you are saying that you are going to increase the edge density uh, that does not uh, because you know one of the things strong repulsions don't like is a large variations of densities exactly okay? exactly so now you have to then exactly now you have to compare energetics now you have to compare the bulk so these large variations so let's say i'm doing something so let me take another example which is this one if if in GIMT I had this density, then as you can see, my density here would be reduced. So in my bulk, I have to increase the density, which it will not like, right? So there would be much more bulk points, which will try to increase the density, which it would not like. Whereas here you increase the density and my bulk will get down in density. So as a result, as you were saying, it will so not follow. the yeah. problem is that when you are going from a finite size to a really large size system it should not matter because the bulk density that you would actually increase yes. is minuscule whereas here because of whatever 50 by 50 versus something something yes yes uh, you, you will see something which is true true different. true Right? True, but so but then, but at least here I yes definitely if I have an infinite system but I will still have an enhancement here it's because this argument doesn't hold for larger systems but still I will have an enhancement because so if you look here that this as you said that the it does not want charge in homogeneity strong correlation does not want charge in homogeneity so basically what it does now what would be the density here it can either be exactly same or enhanced. So even if it is exactly same, if you see, let's say the yellow one, you will see that it will have this uh, zero energy state, which is here, right? What is your boundary condition at the edge? Um, so I'm doing a, so which boundary condition? So I have no boundary condition. It's, this is open. Open means what? So it, so it has this geometry, this geometry. Yeah. So what does open mean? Open means I have no hopping from here to the next one here. 
So there is not no hopping between this and okay. the next one. Okay. So there and is no next the side. So there are two bonds. So effectively, if I go technical, so what is happening here is that, as you said, that it wants to, in the bulk, strong correlation wants to homogenize the density and that it does through hopping of all the bonds, right? Now, if I'm at the edge, I don't have two bonds to homogenize the density. So as a result, I only have two bonds to get to something. So I can increase stuff here, but I cannot increase infinitely to get rid of all the bonds here. So as a result, it is like a surface tension effect that comes up. So you don't have two bonds which goes away. So, uh, okay. Very, very okay. Uh, have you tried to check with what the finite size effects of these are? Yes, like yes. Were... So basically, so I, I have checked for two. So this is a already a large system for me, but I have tried higher system. So, uh, but I didn't look at the density, but as you said, I should expect the density to be at least going down, but I didn't check it. The, I didn't check the density, but I've checked the other features that it works for the larger system. Yeah, but I, what mean, I, think I if, want to go the other way around. I mean, if it's finite size effect, it would show up even in the other way, where instead in of this one. Oh, in the in the other way means uh, you in just, this you, you go thirty by thirty, it should even show you more enhancement. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, yeah, I didn't check that. Effect. Yeah, I I can check that. Yes. Okay. But at least even in the worst case, so let me say that I have a finite size effect. Even in the worst case, what will happen is that this density will be exactly same, right? Yeah, but in this case it gets to because it gets to zero, almost zero or very low. This is not a finite size effect because others have checked in higher system size or smaller system size that this does happen. So this is not a finite size effect. Whereas this, even if it is a finite size effect, it will be same. So even if it is same, you can see that this density reduction will change the number of zero energy states. Mm -hmm. So, okay, so yeah, so I was just talking about this zero energy states, but now if I come back to the fact that these zero energy states are not stable because it has a large uh, zero energy peak and at zero energy, you have a diverging density of state. So it will be very prone to any symmetry breaking that you can allow. So it, unless you break that symmetry, you cannot get rid of this zero energy state. So it has to get rid of this uh, zero energy states only by doing a symmetry breaking like time reversal symmetry in this case, or even translational symmetry along the, along the pair breaking edge. So what happens is that there, it has been long studied that you can actually have time reversal symmetry breaking at lower temperatures because of this large degeneracy at zero energy. There are proposals which says that near the edge, you will have a D plus IS, there are other kinds of proposal where you can, they have said that it, you can have a magnetic order. Both these proposals says that there will be a full gap in the density of state. That means you don't have a zero energy peak, you gap it out. Whereas in the other case, which is the ferromagnetic uh, case where some, there are very recent works where they say that you can have a D plus IP kind of order, like subdominant P coming up at the edge, then you don't have a full gap Whereas the zero energy GP comes down. Now, the problem with all of these is that experimentally in the whole long history of these edges and cuprates, there has been no experimental direct evidence of time reversal symmetry breaking. So both of these says that you have a time reversal symmetry breaking, but there has been no time reversal symmetry breaking signatures, direct signatures in experiments. Another intriguing and very uh, problematic issue is that this one gets no full gap, this one gets full gap, whereas experiments actually interestingly show both. Some experiments show full gap, some experiments see no gap. So that has till date been a huge mystery. Why does this happen? Now, let's say there was uh, two of my collaborators, Thomas Lofwander and Mike Fogelstrom, they actually proposed sometimes back that you can have something interesting, like you can break time reversal symmetry and also the translational symmetry along the edge. Now, if you do that, uh, let's say I'm taking this from their plot. So just bear with me that this is now the pair breaking edge. It is now rotated. So just 
I don't have that geometry because I'm taking from them, but this is now the pair breaking edge. Now at the pair breaking edge, what happens is that the superconducting order parameter develops a phase and it modulates. And as a result, you have some circulating currents, but now these circulating currents are alternating. Like you have something this direction, you have something in this direction. So since they're alternating, what they are saying is that experiments might have missed the time reversal symmetry breaking because you have the plus minus cancels each other. So as a result, you see, because of the time translation symmetry breaking along this direction, you might not have seen the trans time reversal symmetry breaking. Now, if you look at the density of state along, uh, along the pair breaking edge, so this is what they have done is that if you look at the density of state at the center, where the phase is finite, you will see that the density of state, which is somewhere here, you will see that the density of state has a large split. So the zero energy states goes to a finite value. Whereas if you are at the node somewhere between here, where the phase is zero, basically if the phase is modulating, there you will see that there is still a large zero bias P because this phase actually gives a Doppler shift to the zero energy states and they get shifted but at the points of nodes, they don't have a, any Doppler shift. As a result, you still have the zero energy peak. And if you average them out, you will see that this red one is no symmetry breaking. And you will see that in this gray one, you will have some peak here, but it still persists, but there will be some states also coming up here from here to here. Now, this, the problem with this is that it cannot explain the zero energy split. Some experiments sees a split, this is conventionally, as Shubra was pointing out sometimes before, that this is really sensitive to disorder. It has been long thought that it is very sensitive. Any symmetry breaking here should be sensitive to disorder. And also, do they survive strong correlations? Because it, they have done it in a quasi-classical line kind of calculation. So it is not yet known whether it will survive strong correlation. So the very first simple check is that we can see what happens. So what I'm doing it here is that I'm plotting the, uh, the angle. That is, I can always, so my superconducting order parameter is complex. So I have, a, uh, I have an amplitude and a phase. So if I plot the phase, along this direction in BDG, which was the no strong correlation, you can see that it goes from plus one to minus one, plus one to minus one. So you have a translational symmetry breaking along this edge and it becomes finite near the edge. Whereas here, you will see that there is a translational symmetry breaking along this edge, whereas it's only fine, the phase is zero in the bulk, it comes up here. So basically it's sometimes called, they have, uh, uh, they have given a name which is called phase crystal because the phase of the D wave order parameter has some translational, uh, so translational symmetry breaking. As a result, it forms some kind of crystals along this edge. The difference what happens is that you can already see that if you plot the phase along the pair breaking edge along this direction, which is X parallel, you can see that the red one has large modulations. So it becomes, it has fast oscillations. Now, the consequence is that, so this, as I said slightly before, that at these nodes, you still have zero energy states. So at these nodes, what happens, once you have more number of nodes, which is the case in GIMP, you have very large number of nodes, you will have large number of zero energy states still there. So what is interesting that happens is that there is another phase transition that ha happens. So at these nodes, you have, another phase transition in the presence of strong correlation that it actually has some extended S wave kind of order. So it is like a S wave subdominant coming up at the nodes only. So it is still modulating and you have a very interesting phase diagram. So if you look at this at T equal to TC, you have the superconductivity. If you go below at this T star, which is this T star is the phase transition transition, uh, sorry, phase crystal transition temperature. Below this temperature, you have the phase crystal, but at a lower temperature, you have another phase transition coming up, which is like an extended S wave coming up. As a result, you can already guess, uh, before that, let me show that it's actually energetically favorable. So if you have a uniform phase everywhere, 
no modulation then you will have this red line which you in the, of the free energy whereas if you have the phase crystal forming at below a particular temperature you will see that this phase is actually lower in energy now if you look at the eigenvalues now you will see that you still have the eigenvalues here now if you are here you will start the having slope that means you are getting rid of the zero energy slightly now if you are here you now get a full gap if you look at the black one you have a full gap in the energy now if you look at the density of state at zero energy this i'm zooming in zero, at zero energy somewhere here you have a large density of state because you have not broken the symmetry here you have broken the time reversal symmetry and as a result it goes down it builds up somewhere else whereas here it has a full gap so within one model we can actually have both the full gap and the reduction of the density of state which actually explains the dichotomy that has been there till date so, now uh, yeah yeah but is it, i mean if your whole thing is so sensitive to disorder why do you need all these extra order parameters to explain the dichotomy i mean uh, but is, how would you uh, so so let me let me I mean, come the, to the next the, one so you what break, you are saying you but 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 okay 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 i have not i have not actually not explained the experiment better so what happens if you look at the experiment you have experimental data uh, oh, which i don't have right here in okay. this so, but okay. i can tell you what happens is that it shows the uh, zero energy state large zero bias peak will at this not t star but some intermediate temperature but once you reduce the temperature you then get a split or a reduction so above a particular temperature you always see a zero bias peak so if you have if you think of disorder getting rid of zero bias peak it should not be temperature dependent right no locally so locally you can just you could have just gone into a normal phase in which case you have a zero bias but which 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 normal bias. phase uh, so a uh, non superconducting phase non superconducting phase will give you a locally zero but which kind of disorder will so as i showed you earlier that with strong correlation but even forget about strong correlation in let's say cuprets you don't kill superconductivity bulk superconductivity is not killed by disorder Right. you have a age here you have many other things you don't know what kind of disorder is actually happening yes but so this disorder, uh, age you can kill high tc superconductivity by disorder it's it's robust but that has to be much strong as yeah as we have yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. but but all of that being said i'm saying you are invoking three different order parameters with time reversal symmetry breaking what, where is the evidence for any of these because you are giving it as an evidence something where experiment sometimes see this sometimes see that yeah and a simple fact that you know the ages are different that they, they have different disorder and the thing is sensitive to disorder will explain this why but do okay so let me have a fi- so let me have one sample i have a fixed disorder right yeah so now let me change temperature uh, what will you see how can you change the zero energy states because because the zero energy states are protected by any or by time reversal no, there, symmetry there are n number of zero energy states which are not protected in any system yes right? but wh- why should it change of, with temperature why should it ex- uh, there are what? thousands of experiments where people find zero energy states which has nothing to do with topology yes definitely definitely but 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 here you can you can actually in this case you can theoretically show that these zero energy states are only at the 110 edge the not at the other edges given the state of high tc theory forget theory let's yeah exactly so experiment. let's forget the theory yeah let's talk experiments experiment yeah. is there a proof that you have a zero energy protected state which then splits Yes. I mean, I yes. Can yes. Because 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 what happens is that wait, wait, let's say wait, forget wait, wait. about this T star. Mamala, let me finish. Yes. You, you have a locally metallic state which then goes and becomes some uh, superconducting state and you split. What is wrong with that? Uh, so you... uh, at lower temperature. Yeah. Uh, which superconducting state? Why should it form a super? So local metallic state. Why should it come back to a superconducting state? Now? Why not? i if i decrease temperature uh, yes yeah, so that would be like this so that would be like 
this kind of state which is like a subdominant s wave it, that can it, come it up. doesn't need to be it could be simply locally i had a very strongly disordered place i yes. go down i become a d wave superconductor i don't need a d plus is and all sorts of such things locally I, you I, will have a d wave but you have already yeah. killed a d wave right how so you were saying my locally so I what have just is, weakened it so that when I go to high high temperatures, it is gone, and locally I need to go. To okay, so you are saying that I have some I have a T wave which has a TC different from other regions, right? Something yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. Yes, but that would have happened very close to. So as I showed, if I assume that strong correlations protect the disorder robustness, that should have happened close to TC, right? So that how can you it be around twenty percent of, of theory, TC, which are a lot of approximate theory, right? Definitely. Once you get to strong correlations, all these statements are out of some approximate theory. Yes, and yes. But so you are expecting something which has so if I have local TC inhomogeneities, but that would not be of this order. So if I have let's say I didn't have the edge, the same sample. If I look at the gap map or the TC map, let's say. Uh, there is its TC map is not possible gap map. It will not be eighty percent reduction, right? So it, because if that would have happened, that would have been close to TC. Uh, that would have happened at close to one, right? Close to TC or somewhere even. Let's say I am reducing it twenty percent, thirty percent, fifty percent. But it happens at much lower temperature. It doesn't happen. So this is like eighty percent uh, reduction in TC due to. So how can you have it in a gap map? This is not a substitutional disorder. So it's not strong disorder. So if you don't have an inhomogeneity, which is like 90% different, then how can you have another T, which is of the order of 20% of TC? And it, in experiments, I should have had the experiments also. In experiments, it happens at much lower temperature, not close to TC. You, you are cutting an edge at the boundary. You realize yes. that when you cut a material, you are not going to cut it like the smooth. Uh, chain yes, definitely, that you definitely, showing, definitely. Uh, yes. Right? You yes. realize that. So in a real yes. experiment, there can be many, many things. You are, you need an edge which is exactly along the one. Yeah, but, but yeah, exactly. In experiments, so, to be fair, they can have anything. I have. Yes, definitely. I have so this, then, but definitely you can come up with another theory, but no, till date, my, my, there is none. My, so, my whole point is that, you know, it seems like a lot of exotic things to explain something where it's essentially. No, no. So, uh, so basically, basically this other thing that I'm saying that having it or not, was not being explained even by taking the so there are huge amount of theory works which has as you were saying that ramp edges or some edges which has inhomogeneity edge inhomogeneity but they, it has not yet been explained that's what i'm saying so you can try that inhomogeneity which has been tried actually in many theory papers but it's still not proven because that, you know you are, what you are writing down is an effective ffl state where the no, it's slightly effective. different so basically it's actually very different so it yeah you are right it's a ff kind of state where the phase modulates but you have to be careful that the phase modulates only at the edge so what it has a very complicated energetics so this modulation because this modulation is not allowed in the bulk so if it is no, no, a ff is fine, state but but most disorders will kill such uh, exactly. So that's what I'm coming to. Modulation of phase. So that's, that's what, what I'm coming to. That's what I'm coming to. That's my next part. But uh, I can proceed, right? So because mm -hmm. go, ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah. So yeah, then it's fine. Okay. So as you said, that this is really sensitive. I should have expected this to be sensitive. Mm -hmm. Let's see what's happened. So uh, one slide of what happens this kind of topology this is coming back to what uh, vikram and uh, this was the initial discussion vikram subro was saying that this topology is very sensitive to disorder which is true it has been shown by uh, this paper and even other papers that this kind of topology where you have both winding numbers plus and minus as subro i think was saying that you mix them if you have disorder so what happens in a non strongly correlated case you have a large degeneracy here then if you put disorder it gets split it has this it gets actually removed that means the large degeneracy gets slightly broadened now the broadened disorder broadened case is like this black one now 
with strong correlation, then what happens? Let's see a uh, non-symmetry breaking case first. So I don't break any symmetry. So I'm above T star. I'm still below TC, but I'm above T star. Now let's see what is the effect of disorder with strong correlation in GIMT. So if I increase disorder, what happens? It still behaves the very similarly as it was shown here. It behaves very sorry. It behaves very similarly that it this degeneracy goes away like this. Now what we will expect is that since my degeneracy is significantly reduced, what happens? Should my spontaneous symmetry breaking still happen, as uh, Rajdeep was pointing out? then this should be anyway very sensitive. Now, what we see is that if you have strong correlation, you can see that for R equals to 0.5 or even 1.5, you can see that the phase modulations persist. And if you plot along this line, you will see that the phase modulations really persist. Now, if you plot these two transition temperatures, the two transition temperatures I was talking about, the T star and the TS, was if you see as a function of V, they hardly change unless they it either increases or they remain same. So this is really surprising that a modulating, as Rajdeep was saying, that a modulating superconductivity, which is like this, should be very sensitive to disorder. Now, this is extremely intriguing. Now, let's understand why is this happening. So this is, we are already yeah. at 515, so maybe you want to- Yes, speak I will have you. just, uh, yeah. I will wrap up. I know up. we started a little late. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I will just wrap up, yeah. Mm -hmm. So just to give a short understanding why. So if you look at the eigenvalues in GIMT, you will see that disorder broadened this up to this. These uh, open circles are basically no uh, phase crystal, just a uniform phase. And with disorder, if you increase disorder, we saw that it becomes flatter and flatter. Whereas if you form the phase crystal, you will see that it always is energetically favorable to form the phase crystal because it does not, it is still lower than the, the, width, the zero bias peak, that broad peak that you have. So in a way, you actually energetically still are fine if you have phase crystal. But this is not the case. So you might wonder these numbers makes no sense. But here, if you calculate uh, in BDG, the smallest one, you actually effectively kill it. So in BDG, you effectively kill the, the phase crystal even for the smallest one disorder, as is expected, as Razdeep was pointing out. And now let me sum summarize that what we saw in the whole talk is that in the absence of uh, in the only in the presence of strong correlation and disorder, we saw the strong correlation one. If we have topology and strong correlation, that means no symmetry breaking. Uh, if the temperature is higher than some symmetry breaking temperature, then we saw the topology one because the zero energy states are still there even if you have strong correlation. But at lower temperature, you have a very robust phase crystal or any other symmetry breaking, which is there below T star. And if you have disorder and topology, then we saw that disorder got rid of this topology, which is expected as everyone was expecting. But now if you have this three-way interplay, now you can see that even if disorder gets rid of the zero energy states above T star, below T star, it still forms a strongly correlated phase crystal, which gives it a robust phase crystal, which is both fully gapped and not. And yeah, thank you. I would... Sorry, I didn't understand why is it fully gapped and not? Because oh. at the, so it has two, yeah, it has two, so this whole phase is the phase crystal. So you have a phase crystal, which is everywhere below T star. So it is fully gapped below a particular temperature, but above this temperature, it's still phase crystal, but it's not fully gapped, which can be seen here. You can see that if you are here, it's a phase crystal, it changes the width. So it changes the height of the zero bias peak, whereas below this temperature, you have a full gap. So you have both full gap and not. Yeah, so thanks, and I can have any questions now. I might that's, have yeah. deferred no, no, questions no, no. for, yeah. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, questions from anybody? 
Vikram. No, I'm, I'm fine. Vikram, you're yeah, fine. Anyone else has a question? So, I have yeah. a question, Devmala. So, yeah. have people, because when you get the zero bias peaks, then they have a, a certain behavior with magnetic field. Yes. Usually. Yes. So, in the experiments, have anybody looked at yes, whether. Yes, 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 yes. So, with close. magnetic field, it splits. But and it, it increases. Up to a point and then splits? No, with magnetic field, it splits at the very smaller magnetic field. But then how is it, then it's probably not a zero energy uh, protected state, right? So when I'm saying it's protected, but it is not protected against external perturbations. That's why this, so it is protected against symmetry. So it's not protected against external no, perturbations. No, I'm, I'm saying, suppose I do very weak magnetic field, then I can forget the time reversal invariance coming out of the spin, right? Yeah, 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 definitely. I, I, I can just look at the coupling to the charge. Yes. Right? And that you are saying will, because in a normal superconductor zero bias peak, which is, let's say, in whatever, P wave vortex or something. Yeah, like yeah, that, yeah, yeah, yeah. They are robust. To... Robust up to a point and then it starts yeah, splitting. Yeah. Right? No, but it, this, that... this, these zero energy states are not robust to any external perturbation. And that's why, that's why, that's why this is very, this large degeneracy actually kills it. That's the problem. And if it was a P wave, let's say a P wave. So I can actually, so what happens is that now, okay, let me show it. But yeah, this I was the slide I was showing. So this, as you said that this where is it yeah so there are some topological there are this paper actually does that so you can actually calculate the, the winding number and calculate the winding numbers for different chiralities so in the uh, in the d wave state this number of plus and minus eigenvalues are exactly same for chiral like eigenvector and as a result it's very prone very susceptible to any any like external perturbation as you said magnetic field or even disorder Whereas if you have a finite one, this one is a P wave, then it will still be robust to disorder or magnetic field. Now you might say, then why am I even interested in this topology? Now the point is, this is the simplest case where you can see that the topology actually, even if this disorder, so usually what has been thought of is that, uh, let's say in this case, you always think that spontaneous symmetry breaking will happen at some temperature for because of the large degeneracy. Whereas this with disorder will go away. Whereas for this case or P wave, you might say that no, it will be protected against disorder, but it will not be protected against D wave. But what we are showing is that with strong correlations, things can be completely different. And you might have a case where even if it is not protected, you might get a phase crystal, which is really protected. So which you might not expect if you don't think of strong correlation and you just topology and disorder. And this is just a starting point. That's why, as you were intrigued that P wave and all these cases, indeed, they will not have disorder. Uh, they will be disorder protected. But you, at several cases, there would be Majorana bound states, large degeneracy or flat band like P wave. There, with interactions, it's very well known that it might split because of the large degeneracy. And what will happen with strong correlation now becomes much more interesting because it might even have the symmetry breaking being protected. And so so well, one, one thing, uh, yeah. just to, to get, so you're, you are looking at this phase crystal. Okay? Yeah. Uh, can you go back to that uh, slide which had the edge with the lattice drawn? No, okay, not, light, not lattice, the, yes, the, yes, the, yes. The actual... Sorry, just a second. Yes. Yeah. So now, oh. in this, in this, yeah. can you tell me the D wave order parameter lies on the bond? Right? Yes. The red yeah. and the so, green. So yes. what is your phase doing? Can you? So just... what is happening is that so I can always have something being. Uh, so if I have to do get a D wave out of a bond, I have to do some summation, right? So I have to get. 
plus x minus x with the different but sign. Let, let, let me forget about the site. Let me just look at the bond because I can. Okay, okay. So my what, what will my bond do? My what will my phase do is being mm -hmm. let's say it will be somewhere around here, somewhere around here. It depends on the length scale of the phase modulation. It will yes. be plus minus plus minus in this direction. Well, not on every bond. It's not on every bond. That's true because that's a different order. But it has some length scale where it would be positive. It would be at some length scale, which is negative and on go on. It will go on like that. And uh, just this is a schematic. We have a larger system. Yeah. No, no, I understand. But on the red bonds, it's negative, and on the blue, green so bonds. So there are two phases. So when I'm doing this, I should have had the. So when I'm writing D wave, so this is the additional phase. Sorry, where did I have that? It is an additional phase out of. Yeah. So the red and green that you were talking about is already here. So I have made a plus and minus such that I take care of that phase. That phase mm -hmm. is already here. Which has been taken care of. Mm -hmm. So uh, what I'm doing is like delta i plus x mm -hmm. minus delta i minus x, such that that phase is already here. But this is an additional phase that comes up. How, so my question was, how is this different from adding a S wave component? In which case, again, you will get something, no? Or d plus i s or something like yeah, that. Yeah. So basically, this is different because so that will be so if you look at the phase. So in this case, uh, let's see. What is it? Yeah, in this case, you still have a so you have a S wave, but the S wave, if you have that extra uh, extended S wave, you will even if you have a modulation without the phase crystal, it will be within the bonds, right? But this is not within the bonds, it has a larger length scale. So if you look at this case, the non correlated case, it's even higher. So if you think that the a d plus s will take care of that phase that will be at the length scale of the lattice not at the larger length scale I see. but i see yeah i see okay uh, okay so any other questions uh, if not let us thank deb mallo for a very nice talk so yeah uh, yeah uh, maybe Thanks. we can all